I'm Hugh Collingborn, Director of Technology with Sapphire Steel Software. In this tutorial, I want to take a quick look at some of the fundamental features of ActionScript syntax. I'll be adapting the code of the tax calculator from my previous tutorial. Let's begin by looking at the declaration of the calculate totals function. This starts with the private keyword, followed by the function keyword, and then the function name. The private keyword is an access specifier. A private function cannot be accessed by other code outside the function's class, whereas a public function can be used from anywhere. In the case of a seemingly freestanding function like this in an MXML file, where there is no explicit class definition, it turns out that the class is the application itself. I'll explain classes more fully in a later tutorial. After the function name come a pair of round brackets, and these can be either left empty or they may contain one or more arguments passed to the function. This function is an event handler which responds to a mouse click event, as you can see in the MXML defining the button component. You can see that I have designated the calculate totals function to respond to the click event, and its argument is therefore of the type mouse event. If the function returns a value such as a string, the type of that value, that is its class name, is placed after a colon here, and if no value is returned, the keyword void is used. ActionScript delimits blocks of code with pairs of curly brackets. The whole body of a function is delimited in that way. Variables are declared with a var keyword, followed by the variable name, a colon, and the class or type of the variable. Sometimes a value is assigned here and optionally the statement ends with a semicolon. In ActionScript, while semicolons are generally used to terminate statements, they are not obligatory. In fact, there are a few other elements of ActionScript syntax which are similarly optional. For example, the access specifiers of functions, private, public, etc., can be omitted. And it is even possible to omit the declaration of variables that is not putting their types, though this is generally considered to be undesirable. And in these tutorials, I'm going to try to stick to a consistent programming style which encourages clarity. So I will always use access specifiers, variable type declarations, and semicolons. Bear in mind that ActionScript is case sensitive. So I could, if I wished, create two variables containing the same letters, but with a different mix of upper and lower case. And they would be treated as two different objects. That is, unlike a language such as Pascal, for example, where they would be treated as the same object. Naming variables like this would be sure to lead to confusion, however, so I don't recommend that you do it. Variables can be declared just about anywhere in your code. For example, here or here. In complex code, it's usually clearer to declare variables in a well-defined area, grouped together perhaps right at the top of the function. Now I've moved the declaration of grand total up with all the other variable declarations and now I'm going to assign its value later in the code. Now when you have a fixed value, one that cannot and must not change during the execution of your code, it's best to make it a constant rather than a variable. Constants not only help to avoid accidental errors when somebody tries to redefine the value of pi for example, but they can also help to document the meaning of your code. Now here for instance, it might not be obvious what 0 0.15 is supposed to represent. So let's make it a constant with the name tax rate. I use the const keyword and give it the type number. Now, I can use this identifier later in my code. And when I do that, nobody should be able to fail to understand what the code is doing. Writing constant names all in capitals is a common convention, by the way, but it's not a requirement. ActionScript has a number of operators, such as multiplication and addition operators, and I'll introduce more operators as we need them in later tutorials. And finally, there are two types of comments in ActionScript. Comments that run to the end of a line can be written after two slash characters. For example, like this whereas comments that mark off a whole block of text are enclosed by pairs of slash and asterisk characters like these. In future tutorials, I'll be looking at many other features of ActionScript syntax, and we shall also be getting to grips with its object orientation. 